The Foltertech FT6. Let's just say it's been challenging. Hello everyone, Chris here, and I actually debated on whether I even wanted to make this video. But the upgrades that I've recently done to the Foltertech FT6 have worked out really well. I've been able to get a lot of projects done recently that I couldn't have completed without the FT6. At least that easily. And it has turned into a very consistent printer after I made some changes. So I wanted to share those changes with you. Now I have done upgrade videos on the FT6 before, so let's recap a bit and see where we last left it. In the last video, we fitted the FT6 with a Bontech BMG extruder and a Mosquito hotend, which wasn't a bad way to go, but after using it for a while, it really didn't meet my needs. Also, the leveling sensor, I am using an inductive probe on this machine, it wasn't mounted exactly how I wanted it to be. It had just a little bit of sloppiness to it, so I decided to change everything up once again. As part of that last upgrade video, we did update Marlin and get all the features set that we wanted for this printer, and we'll touch on that a little bit later in this video. But with that Bontech BMG and the Mosquito Hot In that we had, it worked pretty well, but I wanted to do a larger project with some flexible filament, and that setup just wasn't doing it for me. So I set out to decide which extruder do I want to use next. And if you're like me, I always have a hard time choosing the feature set that I really want to go with. Well, I just so happened to have an extra Himera, the original V6 one, available. So that's the one I decided to go with. And here's a look at the Himera setup we have now. Just kind of give you a lay of the land. I'll show you the mount more in depth here in a moment. But basically, we used to have the motor behind here, underneath this rail. Now we just have the Himera parked out front. It did change the build volume a little bit. I lost a little bit in the front. But for the advantages that the Himera gives you, it was well worth it. I just used a very simple part fan mount for the front here. It came with a little duct. You can see from the back here, I did retain that PCB that Folger Tech likes to use. It's not the best setup, some of the connections aren't all that tight, but it was a lot better alternative than having to run the wires all the way back to the main board. And with the way I designed the mount, it does clear everything just fine. It's a pretty clean install altogether. And just one more shot from behind, what I was really going for with this layout is I wanted to get that inductive probe lined up as good as I could. On the y-axis, it's pretty much even with the nozzle. And with a printer like the FT6, you want to be able to print large objects because of its build volume. That's why I bought it in the first place. But with the larger prints, you're going to increase your print time and your exposure to failure. If you're printing a large object, you're going to lose a lot more filament and a lot more time than you would on a smaller object. So you want something that's going to be really reliable. I've had a lot of luck with the Himera in the past and its ability to print flexible. That's going to work for the project that I had in mind. But I had to create a mount for the Himera. Now there are a few out there, the FT5 and FT6 are somewhat similar, so those mounts are somewhat interchangeable. But nothing that I really found to be very useful, and a lot of them were very complicated. Plus I wanted to be able to use that inductive probe. So I set out to create my own. And here's the parts that I came up with. Now this is an iteration before the one I actually am using. I'll leave the most current one available in the description. Pretty much the only difference is the probe location. On the last iteration, this one is actually on this door, but you're going to get the gist. On the folder tech, you actually have a PCB where all your hot end connections connect to, and then you have a Cat5 cable that runs down to the control board. So there's space to put that here on the back. And then you would bolt the Himera from the back through to the front. You have this front piece that goes on just like this. You can print all of these parts without supports. There are some locations that are a little bit messy, but it's totally functional. And then your Hermera sits right here. With that last change that I made, I actually moved that pinned mount or your inductive probe mount up here, and that keeps it in line with the nozzle. So you don't have as big of an offset. The more aligned with the nozzle, usually the more accurate you can get it. 
And then on the top, it's just going to mount on pretty much any linear rail, most of the carriages you see. I put a spot here where you could put some nylon on here as somewhat of a wire loom. And then you have extra spots where you can add zip ties to tie all those wires down. So a pretty simple part all in all, it has worked out really well. And again, I already had a Hemera V6 on hand. There are different models of Hemera now, including the Revo and the XS. The XS is a much smaller motor. It's a lot lighter weight. It would be even a better choice. So if I ever get my hands on one of those, I'll probably go ahead and rework that mount. But with this new mount, it was pretty easy to get everything installed. But the FT6 by default has a very large aluminum build plate. And you have to use something on it to be able to get your prints to stick. So I thought it was time to go ahead and get some sort of more permanent build surface. And if you're familiar with the channel, I really like smooth PEI sheets to print on. So I got a hold of build tack and they were able to custom cut a large sheet for this build. If you remember from the other upgrade videos, I actually fixed this sheet down to the platform. It used to be adjustable. It had eight knobs on it, but it screwed down tight. I just did my best to clean the sheet up. I had some hairspray on it and then I did sand it down just a little bit. A sheet like this does cost quite a bit of money, so I definitely didn't want to mess it up. For the most part, it went on okay. I got a few little bubbles, but usually once you heat one of these up, you can smooth it out a little bit, and then it'll turn out okay. So far, everything is sticking great. It's nice and level. I haven't had one print failure since I put it on. Probably the best upgrade that I've done on this printer so far. So thanks to BuildTac for working on that with me. I've got my sheet installed. I've got my Hemera ready to go. Now I wanted to go ahead and tune a slicer profile for the FT6. And I started to see some really weird results in the print quality. The first print I tried after the upgrade was this spool hub. It's just a hub so that you can let your spool turn a little easier on a small piece of PVC. You, you can see just how rough it is on the outside. The part isn't actually the same size as it should be either. It doesn't fit very well. And I have seen this issue before. This is caused by Dwell because of that old school processor. It just can't handle that G code fast enough and it causes it to stutter. I was running just a little bit faster profile than I probably should have on that board. And because these are circle movements, they're a lot harder to process you see this issue. Just by tuning the slicer, turning the speed down a bit, I was able to achieve much better print quality. So if you ever see something like that, you're still using one of the old school boards, that might be the problem. And this is a great place to put clipper. You have a setup like this, you don't want to change out that board, you could slide clipper in and that would take care of all these issues. You can compare those side by side. It's amazing in such a short time that we've gone from these 8-bit boards all the way to 32 and you even see 64s. And you have advanced stuff now like Clipper, where we wouldn't have just a couple of years ago. So if we wanted to revisit the FT6 once again, we could go to some sort of 32-bit controller to get rid of that issue, or we could just roll it over to Clipper. We wouldn't even have to change out this older board. We could just add the Raspberry Pi and Clipper would take care of the rest. So we might visit that down the road. But now the FT6 is very consistent, so I went to making some really large projects.
I've been making a lot of different sizes of these custom holders for strip lights. They go with a roll-up type of LEDs. It's just an easier way to mount them. And I've been making a lot of these fun trays. If you're wondering what all those squares were, the bigger the part you have on one of these printers, the more of a tendency it has to curl. And if you leave a little bit of gap, that can mitigate some of those results. Also, all these trays are UV sensitive filaments. And that's always a good time. So the Fulgitech FT6, we've been through several rounds of upgrades, but now I'm confident in saying that the printer is very consistent. And we could take this even further. We could do some electronics upgrades. We could swap out the firmware. But right now, it's doing a great job at getting me through a lot of projects without any failures. And of course, it's always fun to print bigger. So hopefully you at least found this interesting. That is it for today. And I'll see you really soon on the next one.